Hey, where you been? <laughs> I know where I've been. I've been gathering up materials and dreaming. <laughs> All right. Um, this is what I'm going to be building now, and it's going to be a weird video because it's going to take a good while to make it. But it's I call it the Dakota Pit Tent, and what it is is a Dakota Pit is it makes good use of wood, puts off very little smoke, and it puts off a little heat but I'm not real sure how good it is at heating a shelter. So what I'm going to do is this is a massive experiment with several different designs in this. Now to start with, <clears throat> the frame is going to be out of, I've collected up a bunch of, uh, this is a few parts and pieces out of an old army tent frame from years ago. And, uh, well, some kind of tent. I think it's an army tent. But it's got a few bends in it already. And it's got a few of these uh, neck downs for things to go together. You know, I'll be welding all this together. And I've gathered up, I gathered up this, and I've gathered up a bunch of more tubing, all different diameters. Some of it from exercise bicycles. Some of it from pool vacuums. <laughs> so that's going to be the frame. I'm going to weld that together. And I was originally going to make an aluminum or aluminum, as some people say, a chimney for it. But I decided against that because uh, <clears throat> I never did make a shelter for my carbon fiber chimney. I think a lot of you remember this. The whole thing is a pure carbon fabric, carbon fiber fabric, and it costs a fortune, and it's pretty nice. So I'm going to use this as the chimney. Now, the top hat for keeping the rain out, I'm not going to use this one. I'm going to make a lightweight one out of aluminum aluminum or aluminium <laughs> forgive me i can't pronounce words well anyway i'm going to go okay i'm going to build the frame and it's going to have a chimney that's going to sit over a dakota pit okay uh the inner wall it's going to be a double wall tent okay the inner wall everybody knows how reflective mylar is or what they call aluminized material and it can reflect heat back and trap and make use of very little heat, okay? So, I'm going to be using some stuff called Foilon. It is a very, very, very heavy-duty, serious fabric, okay? I'm going to try to bring you in and get you. It's a woven fabric. Pull this up. It is a woven fabric, okay? On the outside and on the inside, it's like a tarp. That's some serious stuff right there. I mean, some very serious material, and it's expensive. And I've got five small rolls of this. And what it's meant for is it's meant to reflect the heat and the light back on whenever you've got an indoor greenhouse. And it's around the smallest roll I've ever seen. It's $225 for a roll. And a friend of mine was redoing his greenhouse. And I've been bugging him for about a couple of years about that stuff. And as he replaced parts and pieces, he gave me five small rolls. So that's a step in the right direction there. Now for the outer cover, I wanted to go with very lightweight ripstop nylon camo. And I didn't get the coated kind because I'm going to be sewing it all up. And... I'm going to coat it afterwards after it's and, and seal all the seams after it's sewn. But instead of going with the regular camouflage, I went with the digital woodland camo. So I think that's going to be pretty cool looking. But anyway, I was going to do a quick sketch, but I'm already at four minutes. But you get the basic idea. Lightweight luminum frame. Uh, chimney. It's going to sit over the open hole of the Dakota pit so the fumes will go up the chimney and double wall. The inner wall is going to reflect what little bit of heat's put off by the Dakota pit and then an outer wall. Block the rain, block the wind and make it look cool. <laughs> Alright, it's going to take me several days to do this and it's going to be bits and parts and pieces of cutting, sawing, welding and sewing. So let's get on with it and try to try to get this thing built. Alright? All right, now, <clears throat> right off the bat, ahead of time, I can see that I've got a good starting point because I have three pieces that go together. Okay, and that's going to be, as you can see, well, you can't see. <laughs> that's going to be my main hoop. 
I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to saw some legs off and I'm going to weld them together with some of the little end caps. So I sawed out a stack of these pieces. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to weld these little feet on right here. And what I'm going to do is <clears throat> instead of having the spikes directly on the tubing going in the ground, I'm going to weld this on the feet that goes on the hoop. And then I'm going to drill a hole right here. That way not only will I be able to slide it, secure it in the ground with an eye stake, but then I'll have a place right here where I can hook a carabiner to attach the grommet of my tarp. So I'm going to start sawing and cutting and welding and, and we'll see where we'll go from there. I'll show, you, I'll show you the hoop after I've got it, the main hoop done with all this stuff welded on. Alright, now I've got the main hoop set up, that way I can get a height on it, that way I knew how to, uh, how to, um, what size to cut my, uh, legs. Okay, now let me come over here for a minute. <clears throat> this height right here is just not going to be tall enough, so what I have decided to do is I'm going to actually make a leg. This little neck down piece is going to slide up inside there, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose this angle down at the bottom. And then I'm going to weld this on so that it'll slide up in. And then I'm going to put this little foot on here. Okay, so as soon as I get those done, the main hoop part, I got some me more measuring and some welding that I'm going to have to do. And uh, I'll have my main hoop secured all the way down to the ground. So then I'll be able to get my height and then I'll work on my chimney mount. Alright, now I've got these two pieces right here welded. The angles with the little feet on them. So, I got the main, that means, that means that I pretty much got the, I got the starting of the main hoop done. This part slides right in here. And then I got the main hoop done. So I got a place to secure it on the ground and it comes up and goes over. Alright, as you can see there, I got the beginning of the frame. So now I've got the height, and then I've got my width so that I can see if I can set up in it or lay down in it. And I can also see if that chimney is going to work in that height. <clears throat> Alright, I can set up in here, and that's what I want. And I want to be able to lay down. So there's my feet at one end. And i got an extra foot right here in front of me. So that's good. Now what I want to know is on this chimney here, if it comes straight up to the roof, this is how much height right here that I'm going to have to be able to work cook on the fire. That's about right. That's going to be about a foot right there that I'm going to be able to get at it. Alright. That sounds good. Well, that's enough for today. Uh, I got the main hoop done tomorrow when I come out here. 
I'm going to start on the outriggers coming towards the side where the chimney is going to be mounted. So we'll pick this up tomorrow. All right, it's been a few days since I've been out here. So I finally got a full Saturday, I think. <laughs> now what I'm going to do is I got another little foot and two of the longest pieces of tubing. Okay, so I'm going to make the outrigger opposite the chimney today. I got a center line, I got a center line laid out right here, and I got two feet out is where I'm gonna place the foot, okay? So I'm gonna have the foot there, I'm gonna have the longest piece of tubing welded to it, and then I'm gonna cut this off and weld it at an angle, and then I'm gonna take this little stob right here, and I'm gonna weld it right here, okay? So that'll be, the side where the sleeping area is going to be and I'm going to do that today. <clears throat> I'm using an inclometer to get the angle. All right, I got my piece sawed to an angle. And then I've got the smaller piece made. Now it's got a flat end on it and I want it to be able to uh, butt up to this and weld. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to notch it using a cutter here in the old milling machine. notch where it fits the tubing so I can weld it together now. Alright, now as you can see, here is a quick lesson on how to not treat your workbench. <laughs> I got all kinds of stuff laying around everywhere. Alright, let's ease on over here. Now, I've got my... Up here at the top, let's look up here at the top. I got that one little angle piece welded and I've got it leaned against the wall there. And then I've come down here and I've got 62 degrees and i got it sitting right there on that pad. So I'm going to weld that and then I'll be ready to add it to the main... Alright, I got the foot welded on, I got the brace made, and I got it attached. Okay, so this easy side's done. The other side over there where the chimney's going to mount is going to be the hard side. This should be interesting. <laughs> Alright, now here comes another, uh, another part of the recycling aspect of it. I need some thin aluminum or aluminium, however you pronounce it. I need some more tubing for the other side, some small stuff. So what this is, is this is a part of an old Swiffer, you know, mop, dust broom, whatever, that you clean the floor with. And see, it comes into three sections, and you just unscrew them. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, I'm going to use these pieces because it's thin, very thin, lightweight tubing, and I'm going to drill the plastic out of the ends of them. And then after I drill the plastic out of the ends of them, then I got a, an array of short and small pieces of tubing here. I've got I've got some more aluminum and conduit, and I'm going to be welding them probably. I'm going to weld them to the main bar, and then the part that the Swiffer I sawed one in half. The part that the Swiffer uh, was on slides on. Well. That one don't. I thought this one did. Wait a minute. Something ain't cool. Oh, it's the burrs on it. Well, anyway, I'll sand it down. It ain't no big deal. But I'm going to make a frame like this. 
I'm going to weld it together square. And then this is another form of some kind of square aluminum tubing that I used to have for, I don't even know what it was for, but I saved it. But I'm going to saw it into small pieces. And I'm going to use it for another piece that I sawed into two pieces. And that's going to be a frame that is going to sit on top of this frame. See? Kind of explaining as I go. That way I can't, I don't want to have to talk too much as I'm making the parts and the pieces. So what I'll do is I'm just going to start making the parts and pieces and you kind of watch how it, how it comes together. And another thing on that side, the chimney and the pit's going to be on that side. So the leg can't be at an angle. The leg's going to have to be almost straight up and down because the Dakota hole is going to be under the chimney. And then the air hole is going to be right outside the tent there. So I can't have a massive angle right there. So for that, I'm going to be using a, uh, a much bigger diameter on the leg than I was using for the, uh, for the main frame of the tent. So, all right, enough time wasting and explaining. Let's just get on it and y'all watch it a, a step at a time. <laughs> the mount for the chimney made well I got it sawed out and fit so now all I gotta do is weld it all together all right I got this part here all welded together and then I got the little slit pieces put in that way I can align it on the shelter all right let's put this right on here and what I'm gonna do I think I'm going to put it right in here. Let's put a couple of pieces of tape on there so I can see what I'm doing. And then I can, I can kind of tell you how it's going to be from here. The next step, I'm just going to do it. I'm not going to go through it a step at a time because it's going to be pretty much, it's going to be the, uh, <clears throat> it's going to be the same stuff just in a different location. But I got a leg right here that I'm going to use. Okay, the leg's going to be here, and uh, I'm going to make, I'm going to take a couple of smaller pieces, and I'm going to, I'm going to machine them up and make another slit joint that's going to go right in here, and then I'm going to have a leg right here with the tube in here, and then I'm going to have, this is where the chimney is going to be held. Okay, the chimney's going to be held right there. So I'm going to start making all these pieces, and then I'm going to weld them together. And then I'll show you the progress and we'll, we'll, we'll move on to the next step after that. Alright, I got the parts and the pieces ready. I got that piece notched. I got this piece polished. And I got that piece bored out. See the little lip inside it? That way this will slide inside here. Isn't that neat? See, everything on this thing is super, super thin, but this is the thickest piece that I found. And that's just simply because I don't have enough of these little slip joints for everything. So I've had to, I've had to machine a few. And see, that's going to weld right on there at an angle. That way this piece will be able to slip off. 
So I just got to weld it to the leg now and weld these little joints to this and then this part will be done. Ain't that neat? I'm getting so tired. <laughs> All right, I think I got this part done. I got it welded up. Now, I'm ready to put it on and try it. Oh. Scoot this over a little bit. Oh. All right, as you can see, I got the little neck welded on there. Let's see if it fits. <laughs> All right. Oh, and I got the leg. Got a little foot on the bottom. A little angle piece on the top. So let's see if it works. Let's see. This slides into here. It's like a big fork. And then that slides into there. All right. That looks good to me, then. Looks very good to me. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go over here on this other side. And you've seen the sawing, you've seen the notching, and you've seen the welding. So, I'm not going to film any of that part. I'm just going to make that other leg. And I'll probably do it tonight before I go in. And then the next time when I pick back up, we'll be working on the mount for the chimney right here. So, it's a slow go, but, hey, what can I say? <laughs> I'm working on it. <laughs> Alright, we'll catch you tomorrow. Alright, as you can see, I pretty much got the entire frame done now. Because I added this other drop leg going down to here. Ain't that neat? So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to work on the chimney mount right here. And I'm going to show you how I'm going to go about that. Alright, now here's another view of the extra leg I had. And it's got a snap joint right up here. And then it's got a snap joint right there where it slides together. Alright, so pretty much there's the other leg. So there's pretty much the frame, I think, the way it's going to be done. Now I'm going to show you how I'm going to do the chimney mount. <clears throat> what I've done right here, I have a piece of tubing that I have sawed in half. Okay? Now what that's going to do is it's going to sit here, and it's going to sit right here, and I'm going to weld a, I'm going to weld a plate to the top of it. And uh, <clears throat> another part of recycling, <laughs> the aluminum, or as you pronounce, aluminium plate is going to be from an old computer printer. Years ago, my brother worked for a computer company, and they scrapped out a bunch of printers. So I got the old aluminum covers for them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, this is pretty thick, pretty thick, thick material. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to saw it out. And I'm going to cut a precise hole in it for the chimney to be mounted. So that's going to be the next step. That's all that's left on the frame is the chimney mount. Then we'll be working on the cover. So let's saw this out and get it going. <clears throat> that's my lucky pencil.
All right, now I got a nice clean hole right here. Much cleaner than what I could have gotten with a hole saw. So before I take it off this machine, I'm gonna drill three holes in it. And I'll show you why. I'm gonna be using for the, um, for the chimney mount, some things that are called nut rivets. And what it is, is it's a rivet that goes in and it's actually got threads in it, okay? So we'll just, and I've cut off three bolts. So what they're going to do is uh, once the the threads are riveted in, then you can just screw this part in. And that's going to be part of the chimney mount. Or a chimney cap, I mean. Y'all are really going to get a kick out of it. <laughs> it's going to be really crazy. <laughs> Alright, I got the piece off the machine. And I sanded all the paint off of it. And I notched the edges just a little bit. Okay, so... Now what we're ready to do, I got the two pieces here, I'm fixing to weld them on. I've notched one end so that it'll fit over this brace. So let's see how we're going to, let's see how we're going to reach right here. Now, uh, I got this brace right here, so that's where the notch is going to go. That's just going to sit on top, okay? And then this part here is just going to sit right here. And what I'm going to do is put this on, okay? That way, gravity, I'm going to weld it across here, and then I'm going to weld it across here. That way, it's going to have these two curved braces that's so just going to sit on, and then the chimney's going to go up inside here, and gravity's going to pull it down, and then I'll put those nuts in here, and then I'll put the chimney cap on top of it. And then the frame will be, the chimney mount will be done, and the frame will be done. So, let's get on that. I'm going to weld this up right here now. All right. This thing turned out a lot better than I thought it would. I mean, a lot better. <laughs> see, I thought it just sits right on there. You can see how what I've done. I've, I've welded the two half pieces in. Okay. I'll polish them up later. I'll clean them up real good. But it warped. And you can see it warped. I'm having trouble holding it. It warped this way. I didn't want it to warp this way. But it was even better that it warped rising up, okay? So now you just take it and you just set it right there, you know, locks right into place. Now, the way the chimney is going to go, y'all remember the carbon fiber chimney from about eight months ago. The way you're going to put it in is this, the hole is six and a quarter, and the top ring is a little over six and a half. So what you do is you pull it in from the side, and then you just set it on the top. Isn't that neat? Let's get an overview of that right there. So you just slide it into the top right there and then it hangs down and then there's a gap down below and it'll be covering the Dakota. The Dakota hole. Okay. Now, let's get me in a little bit closer here and I'll explain a few more things. Alright, now for the top, what I'm going to do, these things that's got the, uh, the nuts in them, I'm gonna, I'll show you how to put them in. But they're gonna go right here. I'm gonna click them in, okay? And then I'm gonna have a chimney cap for the top. Now, instead of making a chimney cap, here, dig this. <laughs> it's the lid off of an old pan. And what I did is I picked this up at the thrift store for 99 cents. Now, the reason I did this, okay, now this is gonna be the chimney cap, okay? What the chimney cap is going to do is that now I'm going to remove the idiotic looking knob from the top there. So once I remove the idiotic looking knob, uh, it's going to actually look like a chimney cap. Now, the idea behind this is uh, these little studs here are going to screw in. And then on the underneath of this, I got three little pieces of square tubing. And I'm going to space them out. And I'm going to weld them to the underneath that way that you can just slide it right on now another part of this is not only is it good and dome shaped and it's going to keep the rain out but this little lip on it here when i saw this i got to thinking and what i'm going to do later on is i'm going to drill holes through it so that i can slide a couple of stainless steel welding rods through it i'm going to drill about i'm probably going to drill a series of three or four holes so that I can slide rods through it, and that way I can hang pieces of meat or fish over it. 
That way I'll have a little smoker up in the lid. Now ain't that neat. <laughs> so, anyway, what I'm going to do is, like I say, I'm gonna, I always wanted to have a, a I'm going to be cooking down below and then the smoke is going to be rising up. And I wanted to have some sort of a way of putting some kind of a smoker up inside this cap. And when I saw this cap, I thought, man, that's perfect. And I don't even have to make something. I just, I just weld to it, add to it, you know. So, anyway, all this stuff, the frame and everything that I've made, I'm going to polish all the welds up and make everything look real nice. So, what i got to do now is i gotta, uh, I got to attach these. And then I'm going to weld to the underside of this and I'll drill a few holes and then the frame is basically going to be done. Alright, I think any of you that are uh, interested in building things, this uh, rivet nut kit, you just screw it on the end right here. This rivet nut kit I think came from uh, either Harbor Freight or Northern Tools. But you just put that on there like that. And then you just slide it in the hole. And see it's on the back side and then you just crank it down just like you would a rivet gun Urgh! as tight as you can get it and see it pulled on the back side and then all you do is you just unscrew it now wait a minute you unscrew this part yeah you unscrew this back part right here <laughs> see i don't use this that often Man, it needs to be oiled up. All right, let's see if that works now. As you can see on one side, let's cut this down. On one side, you can see where the threads are, and on the other side, you can see where it's crimped in. Okay? All right, there you go. That is how you put it in. All right, let's see if we can grab that crimping process on camera. I'll cut you on micro. All right, slide it through from the back side. And then give it a pull. Ready? There. That's all you got to do, and it gives it a nice crimp. Isn't that neat? You know, this is like the hardest, absolute hardest weld of all on this entire build. Because what I'm doing is I have sat it, the pieces inside here, okay? And what I'm having to do is I'm having to reach. I put an extra long nozzle on and I'm having to reach down inside and feed the rod from the underneath. So, I wasn't going to show that part, but I was just wanting to show you the agony I'm going through. <laughs> Alright, well I got this piece right here all welded up. Let me show it to you. <clears throat> I got all three of the little legs welded in. They're good solid welds too. So, it kind of melted through on the top in a few places. You can see the dimples. I'll sand that and polish it. And then I weld it up where the center was. So all I got to do is sand all this polish. And I'll be ready to assemble it. Alright. The frame is done. The chimney mount's done. The chimney cap's done. It's all done. Let's see if it all fits together and didn't warp up too bad. Alright. That part just drops on. Okay. These will screw and unscrew. Okay. I got the chimney cap all welded up and polished. Wait a minute, let me put in the chimney first. Let's ease you down here a little bit. Pull the chimney up through at an angle and then set it on. Probably like that, okay? All right, now let's see if the chimney cap will fit on. I got my little stobs welded on. Let's see. Put it like there we go and see since those are angled out it's going to kind of wedge it into place all right man that makes me so happy <laughs> that's going to be great 
And then the cloth is going to come, when I do the cloth, the cloth is going to come up around it. And I'm not going to do a whole lot of videotaping of making the cover, but I'm just going to do bits and pieces of it because all it is is cutting stuff up and sewing it. And then down below here is where I'm going to dig a hole. And the Dakota pit is going to be right here. The fire pit's going to be right there. And see, I have, I have plenty of room in here to work so that I can cook. Isn't that neat? Man, that makes me so happy right there. It's do All right, like I said, the frame is done and it's a new day. <laughs> all right, I'm ready to start on the cover and I think all of you know how to, or a lot of you know how to sew and you've seen me sew. So all that's left on this, the cover part is just cutting it into pieces and fitting it. And then I'm gonna tape it all together and then bring it in the house and sew it. Now I've got, let's see. This stuff here, I got five small rolls of foil on. Okay. This is probably gonna blank out the camera from the reflection. But it's like a super, super heavy duty reflective, like an emergency blanket. It's some very thick stuff, and on the back of it, it's white. Okay. So I'm gonna be cutting that up, and this is a little bit closer view of it right here. I'm, like I said, I think it may, the reflection may black the camera out. I can see it's darkening in it, and there's the back side. You can see how it's, how it's woven. But anyway, <clears throat> you know, for the sake of the, keeping the video from being two hours, I'm just going to do this a section at a time. And then once this part's done, I'll move on to the, to the, uh, the outer cover, and we'll see how that's going to look. Uh, there's where the pit will be right there. There's the chimney. Okay. Now I've, I got. I kind of gave you a sneak peek, kind of an idea of what the inside of it's going to look like, because that's one half of the cover that's put on. So the silver part will be inside. So it'll be reflecting whatever heat, because you know the Dakota pit's going to be the fire's going to be down inside the pit. So whatever heat that it puts off. It's not going to be a ton of heat, so this reflective inner wall should be able to retain a good bit of the heat. Okay, so you're not going to see much, but I'm going to, I'm going to put the other half on, and then I'm going to tape it all together, and then after it's taped, I'm going to try to sew it together, and then I'll put the camo cover over the, over the outside. Hey, I got to say, anybody that's interested in making a shelter like this... <laughs> If I had to give any advice, I'd have to say don't do it. <laughs> this has been an absolute nightmare. I mean, it's been it's been unbelievable. The this part of it, the actual the the foil on part. I mean, this stuff just it doesn't want to bend for nothing. It's very 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 stiff. I knew it was some tough stuff, but I didn't know that it was going to be this rough. And so I've got it all kind of duct taped together, and I'm going to try to. Get the whole cover done and bring it in and sew it up. Here, I'll bring you inside so I can show you what this, uh, so I got this other half over here done. I'll try to show you what it looks like. It's light in here, but I'm just trying to give you an idea of what the inside of it's going to look like. I got a feeling it's going to be hard to film anything inside here in the future. And this all wrinkled up looking. The inside of this definitely ain't going to win no beauty contest, but it's going to retain heat. And that's pretty much the name of the game right there. If I can get it all sewed together. I probably... All right, I keep complaining about this foil on cover. And this is going to be the last time that you see it. <laughs> I'm going to pull it off. I got you up here. I'm up here on the ladder. I'm giving you a bird's eye view of how it looks like when I, when I peel it off. All right, let's see. Let me raise this up a little bit. There you go. Maybe you can see it when I peel it off. It's kind of hard to film up this high. I got it 
Now I got to tape the inside. It's just one big gigantic dome. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and I'm going to sew it up and then I'm going to be done with that part. <laughs> hey, all I got to say is any of you out there that's willing to pay $225 for a roll of foil on, good luck. <laughs> I'm glad a friend of mine gave me this because this stuff, it's tough and thick, but it is a nightmare to work with. So, but... You know, once I get it done, I'll have something that'll be long lasting. So, all right, let's get to sewing. This is all you're going to get to see of sewing this cover. As you can see, I have a big, thick, wadded up mess here. And I'm only showing this simply because I don't allow cussing on my video. <laughs> hey, I want you to check this out. I took it apart. I took it apart so I could carry it outside and put the cover over it and test the new cover. Check it out. 3.8 pounds. That's the entire frame, the entire, the chimney mount, the chimney cap, every piece of aluminum I used. 3.8 pounds. <laughs> Rock home. <laughs> All right, I've got it set up in the basement here. And as you can see, I put the frame together and I've got the cover all sewn together. So as you can see, I've got it sewn, completed. It's kind of hard to do, but I left out an important part. Let me set this up right there. When I went, <clears throat> when I went to um, put it on, this part here was kind of sticking up, and it's going to make it harder for me to measure to do the outer cover. So there was a ring that I was planning on putting on top of everything. A lock ring to uh, protect the cover from maybe sparks and stuff. So I, I got to run out in the shop and do it real quick. And I got it started. So we'll go out there and take a look at it. Because I'm going to need it before I do the good outer cover. Alright, so. now what I'm doing to this right here. Pull that off. What I'm doing to this right here now is I'm using this rotary table here. And I've cut the center out, and then I put in three holes, and then I'm cutting the outside, and then I'm going to polish this ring, and it'll be done. And we'll go inside, and I'll show you how it's working. I'll, I mean, I'll, sh I'll show you how it works, but what it's for is it's, it's to keep, it's to keep, if sparks happen to come up the chimney, which I don't think they will because it's a Dakota pit, if they come out, they won't land on the cloth, and it's going to go on top of the cloth and lock the cloth down around the chimney kind of a necessary part that I had forgotten about and uh, I'm not going to show much of the cover the white cover the reflective cover because it definitely will not win a beauty contest <laughs> all right I got to get this done <laughs> Ring done. How's that look? All right, now all I got to do is I got to take this ring in there and I got to put this ring on, and I'll be able to pull that cover down, and then I'm gonna start sewing on my ripstop camo. So now it's gonna start looking good. <laughs> all right, that thing fit good. The ring fit perfect. It's got everything pulled down tight. Now I pulled the studs out because they're gonna be in the way of me making the exterior cover. So now comes the cool part. I get to use this <clears throat> this uh, digital camo here to make the outer cover. So now it's just a point of making a nice all cutting, measuring, and sewing. All right, I got the first part of it kind of set up so that I can start measuring. I got it laid out. You know, it's a funny thing. <clears throat> One of the things that they taught me when I was in school was how important it is to use books. <laughs> All right, well, here it is. I got every single bit of the cloth cut, the ripstop nylon, and I got it all fitted. And of course, it took a whole set of encyclopedias to do it. <laughs> 
And yes, I use tape for all the seams instead of needles because that's just my thing. That's just what I do. And I don't know of any other way of doing it. I'm going to trim this up later. I just got a, a rough hole cut in it. So, yeah, I just, and the door is going to be right in here. And I'm going to seam that under. No zipper. It's going to have Velcro. And, uh, you know, like I say, the tape is just my thing. I don't use needles. So, if you think that's an unintelligent thing to do, just watch an episode of Honey Boo Boo. And you'll think I'm the smartest man that ever lived. <laughs> Now, I stayed up pretty late last night, <clears throat> and what I did is I got the, um, I got the entire edge sewed up, so I got a nice seam around it right here. Got all the edging done. So the only thing left now is to go around on the outside and uh, install the grommets, or what some people would call an eyelet, so that for the stakes. I'm going to show you how to do that because somebody had asked about how to install them on another video and I got to put 10 of them in here so I'll show you how to do one of them and then I'll, I'll set it up out in the yard. Alright, now what I've done now is I have prepared for all the uh, grommets, okay? And the thing that I do is I sew an extra two little squares on the inside for strength. If I can. Can you see that right there, how I got extra little square? The extra thread might look a little bit messy, but it sure does add a lot of strength to it. Okay, that way you're, you're tripled up on it. Okay, all right. Now, this thing in the kit, it comes with a little round punch. So you take the punch and you take a little piece of wood. And what I like to do is I like to set it on another uh, piece of wood and get it good and solid. And you just lay the punch on there and you got to hit it a couple of times with a hammer. Alright. I see it hasn't, it hasn't punched all the way through. Because there's, well yeah it has. You really got to beat on it whenever you're cutting through triple layers like that. And see it's just ripping now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue to tap on it a little bit i'll cut you back on here in a second all right i'm telling you this ripstop nylon is some serious stuff here all right i got a hole punched in it okay so what you do now is you turn it around backwards to the back side and it comes with a die you lay that die on there and then you take the part of the grommet that's got the little neck on it and you lay it on Okay, and then you lay this on top of that, and then it, it's got a flat ring. You take the little flat ring and you just set it on top, and then it comes with a die that you hit with a hammer. You just set it on there, and you give it a hit, and that's it. That's all there is to it. Now you've got a nice grommet. To pull on Whew. well here it is it's finally done and it's out in the yard it's been a very 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 long road but I am so glad I finished it a couple of little details I'll show you and then I'll give you a little overview for the end of the video now the door what I've done is I made it a little bit longer and so far I haven't put anything on it I've just made it to where it overlaps. Now, I don't think I'm going to put Velcro on this part. I'm not sure yet. The inside door, I'm going to put Velcro on it to seal it up good. But this part here, I believe, I can just reach through here. Let's see. I think I can just reach through here and overlap it. And I might put one piece of Velcro right here. 
not real sure just yet. Now, let's run around to the back and I'll show you one of the details on the back. All right, now another one of these little details on the back I was telling you about I was gonna do earlier. Of course, these are here. I got the grommets here for the eye stakes. Well, I've also got a hole drilled for more stakes that are gonna go under here. And I'm not real sure. I don't know what I'm gonna do with this later on. I don't know if I wanna add some grommets to it to make it to where I can I can uh, attach hold of these. I may do that later on because I like to say this is all new to me. This is all experimental. But I can lock the I can lock it down to the ground now and then bring the tin out further. And I'll worry about a floor later on. I'll probably just have a piece of plastic and a foam pad for now till I find out how it works. So anyway, let's get a good overview for this thing real quick and then I'll let you go. I'll wrap it up. I'm happy. <laughs> All right, now, <clears throat> this has been a very exciting experience for me, and I hope it ain't been boring for you. It's, uh, you know, probably been... It's my most complicated, extensive video. And I had a ball with it. It was a lot of work. It was a lot of ups and downs. But next time, next video, you're going to see this thing in action. I'm going to set it up. I'm going to cook some food, I'm going to test it out, I'm going to see how it works, and it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm going to love it. It's just completely new radical design. Um, so anyway, uh, one other thing I was thinking about, I don't know, I guess it's not important, but anyway, may or may not win a beauty contest, you tell me what you think. <laughs> I really like the camo. <laughs> There's a million things I'd like to talk about instead. I'm going to wrap this video up because it's so long. I'm going to give you a quick walk around the tent. And the next time you see it, I'm going to be setting it up. And I'm going to have a great time in it. Because it's all about having fun. <laughs> Alright. Till next time. I'll see you.